Now we're not through with it. Verse 2, And he said, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, A basket of summer fruit. Then said the Lord unto me, The end is come upon my people of Israel. I will not again pass by them any more. Now, you see, God again and again in these visions would change his mind. He wouldn't destroy him. He said, Since Amos has prayed, and there must have been the godly remnant that always stood for God, they prayed, and God would not bring the judgment. But now... The basket of summer fruit says, the jig is up. You've come to the end of the line. Now the judgment will come. And harvest always speaks of that. Now, I have always felt that the passage that our Lord gave has been greatly misunderstood. He said, you remember, the harvest is great, the laborers are few. And a great many people interpret that to mean today that we are to go out and harvest. I don't understand the Word of God like that at all. May I say to you that today, harvest speaks of the end of a period, some period, and it speaks of an end of a dispensation. Now, the dispensation of law was coming to an end. Christ was going to the cross. Now, he said, I need harvesters to go out today, and we're harvesting at the end of the age. But after he died on the cross, why, it's a different story. Behold, a sower went forth to sow. Go ye into all the world and preach this gospel. Go into all the world and sow the seed. My business is just sowing seed. It's the Lord's business to do the converting. And we believe that the Spirit of God will take the Word of God and make a son of God when a man of God will use it. And that's all we're doing is just sowing seed. We're not harvesting. And a harvest speaks of judgment, speaks of an end of an age. Our business today is sowing seed. And very candidly, I wish I could get us all back doing the thing God's called us to do today, and the church is to sow seed, which is the Word of God in the world today. Now, I've spent a little time with that, because that's important to see, and I'll move rather hurriedly. He goes on to say here, "...and the songs of the temple shall be wailings in that day." In other words, a place to praise God and rejoice, become a place of wailing now." saith the Lord God, there shall be many dead bodies in every place. They shall cast them forth with silence. In other words, they will be slain everywhere. The slain will be everywhere. And now verse 4, hear this, O ye that swallow up the needy, even to make the poor of the land to fail. I don't want to go into this again, but I merely remind you of how many times Amos has talked about the poor. And I have emphasized it, maybe overemphasized it. But I happen to be on that side today. I'm not on the young side, but I sure have been on the poor side. And I remember my dad wearing overalls. He was a workman. And I have seen him on Saturday when he drew his paycheck. We bought groceries on credit. He went and paid the grocery He paid the doctor. He paid the rent. And when all that was taken care of, I remember one Saturday reached in his pocket because he always gave my sister and me a nickel, and he had only one nickel there. And he told me to go up to the store in the little town and to get a sack of candy. And I got gumdrops, and you could sure get a big sack in those days. And my sister and I divided those gumdrops. He died when I was 14, and I had to go to work. I had to get a permit for me to work, and I worked for two years. And finally, when I was 17, some folk, after I was converted and felt called to the ministry, they took an interest in me and helped me get through school. May I say to you, my friends, I'm for the poverty program, but not the one they're running today and have been for years that puts money in the pockets of those that already have it. I'm for a poverty program that really is going to help the poor get on their feet and enable them to work. In that day, you see, they made the 
poor of the land to fail. That is, they were brought down to such a low poverty level they could never escape from it. And that is the condition, of course, of many in our land today. And so far, there's not been a program that has worked. And I'll tell you why it will never work until the right kind of people are running it. And that means Christian people. And that is the only way it's ever worked as far as this world is concerned. These people had turned from God, and the poor always suffer in a godless nation. That's been the story, and I don't think that can be successfully contradicted.